Brand new college football playoff poll just released. No change at all as predicted in the top four. It's Georgia one, Ohio State two, Michigan three. Those two teams play this weekend. TCU at four. And then here's where the change comes in because Tennessee now ranked number 10. They were five. They were upset this past weekend. So it's LSU at five, USC at six, Alabama, Clemson, and Oregon. Lots to discuss here on the brand new college football playoff poll, which was released just a few moments ago. And for more, we welcome in CBS Sports senior college football writer Dennis Dodd and the host of Late Kick, Josh Pate. Dennis, we, we start with you, and I know the real story is at five and six, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, I'd like your reaction to the top four remaining the exact same as we saw last week. I mean, you know, exactly how I thought it would be. I didn't think there'd be any change at all. The beneficiaries here are USC and Clemson back in the discussion. Obviously, LSU was in the discussion. Now they're at number five. And I think what the committee has done is poise them there to the point that if they beat Georgia, you're going to have two from the SEC because I don't see any way that uh, Georgia gets left out after winning 13 in a row or whatever it is, leading the nation been number one most of the year and then losing big upset to LSU, but not a monumental upset. Uh, and then there'd be a spot for LSU unless Kansas or uh, Texas beat TCU or, uh, you know, South Carolina, North Carolina beats Clemson or something like that. Crazy to steal a spot. But no, I, I think absolutely no surprise in the top four. So far, no surprise. Yeah. I, I'm looking at my phone right now. Russ, and it's just it's blowing up, which is interesting because we're, we're coming off an announcement where we're all admitting there was no huge surprise. And that's true. I think some people are just now like this thing looks like a Christmas tree. I think some of my LSU buddies are only just now starting to come to the realization that hold up like we really could get in this. And I'll tell you why that is, because the nation collectively has not processed the Tennessee loss, the inexplicable Tennessee loss to South Carolina. They haven't processed it. And so it's almost like it jars you mentally to see those rankings and you just remember, oh, wait, that's right. Tennessee's out of this. So now we, LSU, we don't have to worry about that team that drubbed us at home in a potential head-to-head -head resume test at the end of the year. It could be as simple as this now. It's a tall task, 17 and some odd point dogs. But if LSU beats Georgia, Dennis, LSU's in. You and I just agreed on yeah. that before we went on air. And then you get that fun-filled conversation of, we only have four spots here. Is USC getting left out? Is TCU getting left out? The other Big Ten team? Who's getting left out? Georgia's not getting left out. So that's that has uh -huh. got some people talking, I think, more than just the order of the top four. In, in that scenario, you know who gets left out. is Saturday's loser in Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah. You know, there's a discussion to be had. Well, is Michigan more vulnerable? Is Ohio State more vulnerable? If LSU wins, goodbye loser Saturday. You're not going to put in two from the Big Ten and right. have two from the SEC because obviously it's not deserving. And I'll tell you what else happens with LSU. Now that LSU, that Tennessee loss turns into an advantage. Hey, top ten team. Top only ten lost. Team, yeah. lost by one to Florida State, who now looks like they may win nine or ten. We don't even know. Um, so it's, it's clear that what you and I saw coming, everybody else has realized. Here's the other thing that is dawning, I think, on folks out west. I was... I was looking at the ranking release and thinking USC is a big winner here. And they are. Make no mistake, Lincoln Riley's got the Trojans poised to, if they win the Pac-12, I would think it's more likely than not, certainly, that they're going to the playoff because they would have finished the season. I mean, we're sitting here looking at it with top 20 wins over multiple teams. And you potentially, you, well, you got Notre Dame this Saturday, and if you win that one and you win the Pac-12 championship game, that is a really, really good resume, not to mention you just knocked off UCLA. So they're playing their best ball. But here's where the disaster scenario for them is. If LSU goes and beats Georgia and the chalk holds elsewhere, mm -hmm. you've got Georgia still going to be in. LSU's going to be in at that point. Big Ten. One of the Big Tens are in. And then if TCU goes undefeated, they're not getting left out. So you're looking at a scenario there where – the worst thing that could ever happen for USC is LSU pulling that upset. Because if the favorites win elsewhere, oh boy. And they would have no, they would have no argument. No. No Power 5 undefeateds ever been left out. So TCU's except, in. Except for once. In 2004, Auburn was left out of the BCS at 13-0, 12-0, whatever it was back then. That Mike Sly was so incensed, he started the movement for a playoff. Yep. And that was 18 years ago. Tommy Tuberville was in the press box at the Orange Bowl Shaking hands with AP voters trying to get in because that was part of the BCS back then. So, no, TC, TCU's not going to be left out. 
and USC wouldn't have an argument. They That's the way it goes. They would not because it's not like the loser of that Big Ten game is being put in. At that point, you got that conference championship flag to wave. They do not have an argument, at least I don't think. Here's, no. here's where the potential argument could be, and I think it would be a losing argument. They could say, why does Georgia just automatically get in over us? Their, their schedule outside of fill in yeah. the blank has not been anything to write home about. doesn't matter because the brand equity is built up with Georgia. They've had that number one next to their name. It shouldn't matter, but it does matter that they hoisted that trophy last year. They're not you're not jumping them. I mean, I don't know what else to say. You're not jumping them. So, Russ, I know that felt like about 20 minutes, but, man, there was more to talk about than I thought there was going to be. Russ is next door. Actually, I could go get him. This is, this is Paul. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Paul. It's been a still long four time. Letters. It's okay. It's, it's, it's still an enjoyable conversation to listen to, and there have been a number of times I thought, oh, if I was there, I'd, I would jump in and, and re-tee or, or right. take it down a different path. But. You're talking about you know, scenarios of the what-ifs. What if LSU beats Georgia? Well, of course, Georgia's going to be in. And, Josh, I, I think I know where you come down on this. But, Dennis, I'd love to hear about what you think about the Big Ten. So LSU Georgia is down the road. This weekend, we know we have Ohio State and Michigan. What if Michigan beats Ohio State? What would you do with, and what do you think the committee would do with the Buckeyes? Well, you've got to tell me. It, you can't just do it in a vacuum. You've got to tell me if LSU beats Georgia. You've got to tell me if TCU wins out. You've got to tell me if USC has a, a finishing kick of UCLA, Notre Dame, and Oregon, three basically top 15 teams. Right. Then I can tell you. Without that, it, it, with a non-vacuum, I can say I think Michigan's more vulnerable because of the three lousy teams they played, or semi-lousy Connecticut, uh, at the beginning of the season. But... If Michigan walks in there and blows out Ohio State, which has been ranked, by the way, in the top three all season mm -hmm. and takes care of them a year after doing the same at their place, that has to enter the mind of the committee. So I don't think, again, I, they're going to try to pin down Boo Corrigan on absolutes as they do every week. There are no absolutes in here. There are so many layers of this, it's impossible to predict. Yeah, Paul, 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 Paul. <laughs> all right, so there we go. So so what what I'm sitting here thinking as you say that is, Let's say, let's say Paul can push that magic button. And, all right, there we go. Chalk holds elsewhere. And Ohio State loses a close game to Michigan. They're out. I think they're out. Uh, that's I think the, so. That's the tough answer, but that's I the answer so. we're looking for here because we have got two SEC. Well, you got an SEC team in there. Uh, you've got TCU in there. I think we got a Pac-12 champ. Look, here's the other conversation. Clemson was ranked, what, sixth tonight or seventh? Clemson's resume may put them in because once you add the conference championship to your resume which ohio state does not have in this scenario i don't think it's an automatic that ohio state finishes above them so I, i'm pretty I confident agree. in saying with the way it shakes out if chalk holds which is not a guarantee but this is hypothetical if chalk holds buckeyes are out uh, that's by the way why this weekend is so huge now i know that sounds obvious but paul everyone home think about this for a second this game last year, Michigan wins. We were both there. Yep. And it's snowing. And, okay, that's a, that's a shocking upset, but they were going to get us eventually if we're Ohio State. Everything since that moment has been geared towards this Saturday at the Horseshoe. They've got to come to our place now. We get to play them on turf. It, it looks like, well, we may have rain in the forecast, but Ohio State is built to this moment. If they lose Saturday, you're looking at a C.J. Stroud-led team that the history books will remember for one reason, and that is they didn't even play for the Big Ten championship, much less go to the playoff or win a national title with him. So if it didn't already have a lot of ramifications and stakes on that game, it would be nothing short of a catastrophic loss for Ohio State football, and then they would just think about the playoff after that. The real value to all this, guys, I mean, until the playoff is actually set, is in the conversation that it creates, the, the, the back and forth, the argument, the agreeing, the, the occasional agreeing, I should say. Let's get to the final six. And I know we're, we're, we're jumping a couple of uh, hurdles here, but I'd love to know your final six, the way you guys think it'll play out after the college football championships, or I'm sorry, after the conference championships in a couple of weeks. What will your top six look like? Dennis, you can go ahead first. Well, mine's predicated on Michigan winning. Mm -hmm. So you got to start with that. We can have an argument about how or why or if, but I think Michigan is set up physically to win this game on the road. They, Ohio State was their daddy's, or Michigan was Ohio State's daddy's last year. I think in weather, which Ohio State has not performed well in this year, 
Uh, I think they're ready to go. We don't know about uh, Blake Corum. We don't know about Donovan Edwards. But if one of those guys plays, I think they're set up. Okay, so Michigan wins. Georgia wins. Okay, I've got Georgia number one. Michigan number two. I've got Chalk with TCU number three going undefeated, as we mentioned. So the decision then becomes Ohio State is a runner-up or USC or Clemson. I've got USC at number four winning its league. We discussed that with a finishing kick, which will mean everything to the committee. Two, three top 15s, UCLA, Notre Dame, and Oregon. Very impressive. Ohio State, five. And then Clemson, probably with the weakest resume of those three conferences we're talking about, in at number six. I've got conference champs one through five. As it turns out, I just gave you all that nonsense, and now i got <laughs> conference champs one through five. So I've got Georgia number one, and that's obvious. I've got Ohio State number two. I have got USC number three, because if all else comes through and USC ends up winning, just talked about it. That's as impressive a three-week stretch as any of these teams will have put up. So I still think TCU's in. I think USC may jump TCU. So uh, listen, that's an unenviable position because that is the difference between playing Georgia probably in Atlanta in, in, yeah. in round one versus maybe playing Ohio State. And then I've got TCU four. So I got Clemson five. And then whoever loses that Big Ten game, I got them six. So I think conference championships are still going to, at least according to my little graphic there, mean a whole lot at the end of the day. All right, Josh, Dennis, thank you guys. Good time now to check out the latest odds to win the national championship. Georgia, the favorite, minus 130. They're followed by Ohio State at plus 210. Then we have a pretty big drop-off. Michigan next, plus 800. They're followed by TCU at plus 1600. USC and Clemson are both plus 2,000. And we welcome back Dennis Dodd, Josh Pate, for more reaction to the latest college football playoff poll. Dennis, if you had to pick one team and label that team the biggest winner from tonight's brand new poll, who would it be? Well, I'm trying to pick one. I'll pick two. I'll pick LSU, which was a revelation that they are now poised by the committee to get in uh, if they win out. I think that's clear now at number five. That's what they did, even if it was, you know, unconscionably. Uh, and obviously USC, and I don't have to tell you why. Yeah. Um, they're right there. They can win out three game finishing kick, all ranked top 15 teams. So I cheated. I cheated. I'm sorry, Paul. I picked That's two. fine. Yeah, because <laughs> I'll, I'll um, kind of echo what you just said there. I think USC is a huge winner because I think for the first time it's possible to sit here on a Tuesday night and see a path for them to not just sneak in the playoff, but now we irresponsibly get to talk about potential seeding. And if they lock down that three seed, Dennis, I mean, think about Lincoln Riley and USC being told, you don't have to fly 3,000 miles to Atlanta, Georgia to play Georgia anymore. You get to drive, if you want to, over to Phoenix, Arizona, and you get to play TCU or someone like that. That is that is the difference, probably, between going to the national championship and not going. So it's a huge deal because the winner, to me, is USC in that we just looked at Notre Dame, who they're about to play, top 15 team. UCLA, they just beat them, top 20 team. And then you got... Let's just assume Oregon for a second, for argument's sake. If Oregon meets you in the Pac-12 championship game, by the way, that's a Friday night game instead of Saturday, that's another top 10 team there. Uh, you will finish with a flurry, and the committee doesn't have to feel bad about jumping you over TCU because they're still going to pat TCU on the head and put them in, and their committee would love nothing more than to serve TCU up to Georgia. So there's a lot of motivation here, I think for USC if they went out to be placed in that number three spot. USC fascinates me because they basically got Caleb Williams on offense. They don't run the ball well anymore right. with Travis Dye out. Now, they had the transfer kid from Stanford go for a career high on Saturday, but that's not going to keep going. And on defense, they give up a lot of yards and a lot of points, but Alex Grinch's uh, complimentary defense has produced 18 interceptions, the most in the country, and they have not lost a fumble. They lost a fumble on an onside kick or something, but 775 snaps, no lost fumbles. That's a weird profile for a team, but they've earned it, and that's why they should be in what you just discussed. Yeah, I think also, you know, I agree with you with Clemson too. I just wonder, you know, how much more they need to have happen. Uh, and I also, like, I'm not foolish enough, especially after we saw them against Notre Dame just inexplicably get smoked. I'm not foolish enough to look past this Saturday. You know, they play all of a sudden an upstart South Carolina team, if I can say that. 
I, I don't put anything past anything in this sport right now. So outside of a shocking upset, I think what you and I are saying holds water. But, I mean, look, if anyone's looking for motivation or incentive to tune in this week, I don't know what it is about Thanksgiving week, but, I mean, you know as well as I do. You've covered the sport way longer than I have. There are always two or three results, even this late in the year, that just makes you go, I thought I had this figured out. I thought I had this sport figured out. Absolutely not. It's just that there's no skill in knowing where it's going to come from. So me talking about Clemson probably guarantees they win by 30 Saturday, and then it comes from the form of Iowa State beating TCU or something like that. Clemson right now ranked number eight, and uh, we talk about surprises or intrigue with the brand new college football playoff poll. Just to review, guys, top four, no change. LSU comes in at number five with two losses, and it's USC. One loss, USC, just behind them at number six. Guys, thank you very much for more awesome content. You can check out the Late Kick with Josh Pate delivering college football the way you want it. Behind the scenes whispers and intel, thanks to a network of team insiders, game breakdowns, and rapid reaction. Join Josh three times a week on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also listen to the podcast version, The Late Kick with Josh Pate. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.